This video was brought to you by our Patreon backers, like Nathan M. Support the channel, get exclusive live streams, early access to videos, behind the scenes posts, the ability to choose our video topics and more. The link to that's down below. The next week in Congress looks to be a big one for Biden's Build Back Better bipartisan infrastructure bill. Say that 10 times faster. As President Biden looks to bolster his foreign policy and climate change agendas at the COP26, the UN Climate Conference, he seems to want to wrap up his domestic policy agenda before heading abroad. Exactly what's in the final bill is still being hashed out, according to Speaker Nancy Pelosi, but it's looking like the massive $3.5 trillion package we'd expected isn't coming to fruition. Democrats from the Senate, House and the White House have all been negotiating this infrastructure package for months at this point. The package consists of two distinct bills that President Biden hopes to pass around the same time as each other. The first is a relatively uncontroversial bipartisan infrastructure bill for what's known as hard infrastructure, stuff like roads, bridges, etc. The second is a human infrastructure bill. This is the bill everyone is fighting over and has thus far been the hardest to wrap up. The human infrastructure bill included social programmes such as an expanded child tax credit, paid family leave and free community college. Additionally, it would raise taxes on the rich and other groups in an effort to raise revenue just enough to pay for the hard and human infrastructure programmes. First, let's focus on the bipartisan and hard infrastructure bill. All signs seem to indicate that this bill will get passed and signed before President Biden heads to Glasgow. The bill boasts $1 trillion in total spending with $550 billion of new spending, some of which will go towards Biden's climate agenda. New electric vehicle subsidies, a modernisation of the electric grid and more money to help fight natural disasters are all included in this bill. If everything goes smoothly, Biden should be able to sign those climate provisions into law, then jet off to the UN summit to champion them on the world stage. The second, human infrastructure bill, is where trouble has arisen for Biden. While the House of Representatives looks ready to pass it before the climate summit, giving Biden yet another, albeit slightly smaller, win on the domestic policy front, it's thought that this bill will still take a few weeks to make its way through the Senate. Just about every inch of this bill has been fought over, and while the final bill isn't out, there are plenty of reports in the media about what's been cut and what's made the cut. The expanded child tax credit passed by Biden early this year looks poised for a cut to only a one-year expansion. Similarly, free community college has apparently been cut. Then, while funding for child tax care is still in the bill, family leave has been cut back slightly. Clearly, this bill will be markedly smaller than it was proposed to be. The reason these negotiations have been so brutal is mainly because of a huge schism in the Democratic Party over what their priorities should be. In the House, there's Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and her squad of very progressive Democrats who ideologically are quite aligned with Bernie Sanders. They've been pushing to make the bill as large as possible, at one point wanting $6 trillion in spending for climate programmes, paid off, and free college tuition. Importantly, the progressives are also trying to get a new slate of taxes on the ultra-rich in order to pay for their plans. They're fighting with the more moderate wing of their party, headed by Senators Joe Manchin of West Virginia and Kristen Sinema of Arizona. These moderates want less spending because they're concerned about economic inflation and the effects of higher taxes on business. Neither side wants to pass anything until everything is agreed upon by everyone, since if either group decides not to vote for one bill, the other is sure to die as well. In what must be a disappointment for many progressives, this human infrastructure bill is looking to only be in the $1.5 to $2 trillion range, a big drop from their desired six and their already negotiated down $3.5 trillion packages they'd pushed hard to pass for months. Not only would this mean that many of the progressives' desired social programmes won't get funding, but it's also being reported that many of their key tax provisions will be cut as well. For example, it's reported that there won't be any increases in personal taxes of the rich or the corporate tax rate, both of which progressives were campaigning hard for. It's not all doom and gloom for House progressives though. Just recently, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen had proposed adding a tax on unrealised capital gains. After that endorsement by the Treasury, reports emerged that such a tax will be included in the Human Infrastructure Bill. Capital gains taxes to assets like bonds, stocks and real estate. 
At the moment, you're only charged capital gains tax when you sell your asset. So if you buy some stocks and they go up in value 10% every year but you don't sell them, you have what's known as unrealized gain because while your asset has gained value, you haven't actually turned that into cash. Historically, governments have avoided taxing unrealized gains for two reasons. First, if you've put all your money into assets, then you might not have any cash left over to pay your unrealized gains tax. Now, you might be thinking, just sell some of your stocks, rich people, and fair enough, but imagine an old person with no disposable income living at their home that goes up in value. All of a sudden, you've got to pay capital gains, and the only way they can do that is by selling their home. Even if you think that's actually a good idea, and it might go some of the way to solving the housing crisis, for example, it's a politician's nightmare. So, they've had to avoid it so far. The second reason is that valuing unrealized gains can be a logistical nightmare. It's not a problem with stocks, essentially because there are a load of stocks identical to yours, valuing it is pretty easy, but it's harder with something like real estate. You can't know the real value of your property without, well, actually going to the market and selling it. So an unrealized capital gains tax would need some sort of annual valuation algorithm, which is bound to annoy voters because they'll always accuse it of overvaluing their stuff. Anyway, we don't know the precise details yet, but reports suggest that this tax would only apply to the super wealthy, so you don't have to worry too much, marking an important progressive win in favour of their agenda. It should also be noted that while the bill is looking significantly smaller, many of the provisions are actually very progressive, clearly showing that the House progressives have sway to affect policy making. All of these negotiations and votes are very tenuous. With the Senate split 50-50 and only a three-vote margin of error in the House, the Democrat majority will have to play everything just right in order to successfully pass these two bills and keep everybody happy at the same time. With that uncertainty in mind, Biden has to try and sell his climate policy to world leaders. No small task in its own right. Whatever the outcome of the hard or human infrastructure bills, we'll be sure to keep you updated on all of the developments. But what do you think? Is this reckless Democrat spending, or has Biden not gone far enough? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you want to get even more involved, then you can back us on Patreon, which gets you a whole load of perks from exclusive live streams to early access to videos, behind the scenes posts, and the ability to choose our video topics. The link to the Patreon's down below, and thanks for your support because we literally couldn't do it without you. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we post a video. And special thanks to our Patreon backers for making videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name listed at the end of videos just like these people, then be sure to back us on Patreon.